What if we understood gender in all or most of its variations? What would that change? Imagine a world in which gender differences were widely understood and appreciated. The words sex and gender are often used interchangeably, but they are not the same. The key to understanding their difference is simple. Sex is a physical attribute. Gender is a non-physical attribute. You can tell someone's sex by seeing them naked, and typically even with their clothes on. Gender, on the other hand, can be difficult to recognize since it reflects our mental and spiritual state, how we feel. So, how do we identify and describe a hidden quality like gender? One way is to consider how it affects what we see, do, and feel. The perceptions, behaviors, and feelings that we associate with gender are in large part a consequence of how our brain processes our information. Let's look at the brain. Each hemisphere of the brain is operated by an autonomous system. The two systems complement one another, meaning they see, do, and feel different things. One system gives us masculine gender, the other gives us feminine gender. Here are some more examples of how the brain's division into complementary hemispheres affects what we see, do, and feel. It affects what we see by giving us complementary viewpoints. One is locally oriented. The other is globally oriented. A locally oriented viewpoint allows us to focus our attention on selected details, such as someone's sex or gender. In contrast, our globally oriented viewpoint scatters our attention. A scattered view of our world shows us the big picture. With the big picture in mind, we perceive collective aspects of sex and gender, such as how they affect cultural issues. The brain's division into complementary hemispheres also affects what we do. Among other things, it gives us two ways to connect. The local side of the brain is aggressive. To help us connect with people and things, it uses electric energies to reach out. The global side of the brain is passive. It connects through the use of electromagnetic energies, which it uses to draw in the people and things that interests us. Electromagnetic energies affect our movement and tone. Movement and tone often reveal gender. Finally, the brain's division into complementary hemispheres affects the way we feel, since our local side is energized by fear and our global side is energized by love. And of course, what each side of the brain sees and does also affects how we feel. The local side of the brain feels fearful, aggressive, and focused. The global side feels loving, passive, and scattered. Bear in mind that a system of two complementary parts produces a continuum. A continuum unleashes a wide range of viewpoints and genders, not just the two most obvious ones. What we see, do, and feel depends on our values. Local and global systems serve different values. Above all else, the brain's local system values the self. As such, its primary role is to serve the self. This means it values our security. Valuing our security, it values the use of separation as a way to distance us from threats in uncomfortable situations. And as I've said, it's aggressive to ensure that we have what we need to survive. Local system energy needs to be aggressive and competitive. To keep us vigilant, it needs to be fearful. Perhaps this self-above-all-else mentality explains 
why our local system responds to people and things as objects. In any case, the actions of our local system generate separative, aggressive, competitive, fearful feelings in us. Local system energy feels masculine. In contrast, our globally oriented system values others and service to others, even at the expense of self. When we are globally oriented, we see how people and things connect. We see the oneness. Global system energy is passive. It is cooperative and loving. Our global hemisphere personifies people and things. Its energy has a feminine feel. The brain's local and global operating systems either work separately or in combination, depending on the type of genetic dominance that we inherit. Genetic dominance determines how two design elements, such as masculine and feminine gender, relate to one another. There are three types of genetic dominance, complete, incomplete, and codominance. This might sound complicated, but it's really very simple. Complete dominance is the most common type of genetic dominance. When genetic dominance is complete, we inherit binary gender. Complete dominance regulates the brain's operation by ensuring that one operating system, along with its viewpoint and gender, completely dominates the other. When one system is dominant, the other is recessive and serves the dominant in a support role. Since either system can be dominant, complete dominance produces either feminine gender and an attraction to males or masculine gender and an attraction to females, regardless of our sex. When dominance is complete, males tend to inherit a local viewpoint. A local viewpoint, remember, promotes selfish behaviors. It causes us to be aggressive, competitive, and separative. Our local system objectifies people and things. It has a masculine feel. Females, on the other hand, are more often informed by their global viewpoint. A global viewpoint promotes altruistic behaviors. It causes us to be passive, cooperative, and connective. The brain's global system personifies people and things. Global systems give us feminine gender. Now, no doubt you know many men and women who don't fit this description, especially women, but that's because the dominant pattern is often altered by other genetic factors, cultural influences, and personal choices. Some of the reasons for this are more fully explained in my book, How Whole Brain Thinking Can Save the Future. I also address this issue in my next video, Gender's 16 Variations. Having considered how complete dominance affects gender, which is to make it binary, Let's turn to non-binary gender. Non-binary gender occurs when incomplete dominance and codominance cause masculine and feminine systems to combine. Because masculine and feminine systems can combine in a variety of ways, incomplete dominance and codominance produce a wide range of gender behaviors. Much of the fluidity we see in gender is a consequence of incomplete dominance and codominance. Here's how the two integrated genders differ. Incomplete dominance causes the brain to be operated by a hybrid system. A hybrid system combines masculine and feminine genders into a single gender. Since masculine and feminine genders can integrate in a range of ways, a hybrid response is polysexual. Incomplete dominance produces hybrid gender. Cooperative dominance, called codominance, is different 
in that it triggers the hemispheres to be managed by a team operating system. With a team of systems, our masculine system is dominant and attracted to female bodies, and our feminine system is dominant and attracted to male bodies. When team systems feed mind, we experience both masculine and feminine gender, and our behavior is bisexual. I refer to this gender variation as team gender. In summary, genetic dominance causes masculine and feminine genders to integrate in two ways. As a consequence, gender exhibits four fundamental variations. Masculine gender, attracted to female bodies, feminine gender, attracted to male bodies, hybrid gender, that is polysexual, and team gender, that is bisexual. For more on gender and dominance, look for my video, 32 Sexual Orientations.